In this video, we're going to run through some tips for ensuring your energy analysis model is as accurate as possible. We'll also cover some tips that you can use to better visualize your model in Revit. We're going to use the Health Center model that has been previously discussed and analyzed. Note that most of the steps shown in this video were already done for the models in the previous videos. Now we're going to work with the original, unaltered model so you can get it in the shape it was in the previous videos. Before we even start, let's create a view in Revit that will make it easier to spot missing elements or gaps between elements. It's worth noting that the energy analytical model is not actually created from this view or any other particular view setting, but it's created using all the elements present in the view. To create a new view, go to the project browser, find the default 3D view, and right click to duplicate. Rename the new view Energy Analysis. Next, from the View Properties, open the Visibility Graphics Overrides dialog box. Select all and then uncheck one of the elements to uncheck all of them. Then one by one, re-enable the following elements that are used in the Energy Analytical Model creation. This now leaves you with a view that only shows the elements used in EAM creation. This makes it easier to spot any obvious missing elements or gaps. Now we'll simplify the view even more to minimize the processing time and memory required for EAM creation. The EAM creation algorithm works on the basis of a bounding box that contains all of the elements present in the model. Revit has a 3D view section box that isn't exactly the same as the EAM's bounding box, but it can be useful for visualizing how to minimize the bounding box size. To view the section box, enable it from the Energy Analysis section of the Properties box. With this view, we can see that there are elements in the model, specifically floors and a slab, that are irrelevant to the energy analysis. They will not form analytical spaces or cause significant shading. Therefore, we should remove these from the EAM creation to speed the process up. Select these elements and uncheck their room bounding property. In order to keep track of the elements that have been disabled, it is useful to hide them in the energy analysis view. Now disable and re-enable the section box. You will now see that the size of the section box has shrunk. The reduction is not huge, but it is likely reducing processing time by 30%. This can be much more significant on other models. So now we've created an energy analysis view that allows us to easier inspect the model for potential translation problems. Let's visually check the model and see if we can find any. The best way to do this is by doing a 360 inspection, looking for obvious gaps or missing elements. If we look underneath the model, we can see that there appears to be a cutout in the floor. There also seems to be a narrow gap between the floor and a wall. If we leave the cutout in the floor, an analytical space will not be created for this part of the building and will thus not be considered an analysis. Let's fix that now. The gap between the floor and the wall should also probably be addressed for model completeness. However, this is actually okay to leave for now. Elements do not have to be perfectly tight for analytical space creation. Typically, it's not possible to spot all the gaps and missing elements just from visual inspection, especially for large detailed models. Therefore, the next thing to do is to check the actual energy analytical model itself. In order to access the EAM, we need to first run a preliminary analysis to create the EAM. Access the energy settings. Aside from the usual settings, we're going to note the values for analytical space and surface resolution. Right now, they're set to the defaults. These defaults provide a good starting point, so no need to change them yet. Now you can run the energy simulation. When the simulation is complete, open results and compare and look at the floor and wall area values reported under building performance factors. These values are a good high-level check that the EAM has been created properly. Next, from the open toolbar, select Design Review. This will open the EAM in Design Review. Immediately, we can see that the EAM has a lot of gaps, and these gaps are bigger than we ideally want. To fix this, we'll need to set the analytical space and surface resolution to lower values. But before we do that, let's inspect the shades. 
Checking the shade surfaces is an easy and quick way to make sure the EAM was translated correctly from Revit. From the Model Browser, expand the Surfaces tree. Select the first item, and while selecting Shift, click on the last item. This highlights all the analytical surfaces that identify as shades. Now we're going to inspect the model with shades highlighted to make sure all the shade elements make sense. Right away we can see that the roof over one of the entrances is on the ground. Let's move back to the Revit model to find out why. When we select that element in Revit, we see that its room bounding property is disabled. Enable this property so it will be included in the EAM creation. Another energy analysis run after this fix will show that assigning the roof as room bounding fixed this. To continue to check the energy model and ensure its translation from the Revit model, we'll repeat this process. For the next round, we'd reduce the space and surface resolution, run an analysis, check for gaps, and adjust the Revit model accordingly. It's important to decrease the space and surface resolution incrementally. For example, after the defaults, we might try decreasing the space and surface resolutions accordingly. Decreasing these values incrementally is important because as you decrease the resolution, you increase the processing time. It's also helpful because as you decrease the resolution, the likelihood of finding a gap or missing element is higher. So through incremental decreases, they're easier to catch. Let's say we've gone through and decreased the resolution to the minimum and check the EAM and Revit model along the way and our final EAM looks like this. You can see the gaps between the analytical surfaces have been virtually eliminated. Our energy analysis results might look something like this. Typically, as resolution decreases, floor and wall area increase unless a missing element or gap that was previously not detected is now picked up. As we decreased our resolution, we can see that our areas increased, so this is a good sign that things were working. If we compare the total annual energy across the model, there's a difference of about 10%. This might seem like a lot, but the goal of simulation is not to determine actual energy end use, but rather to determine the key factors that drive it. If we look at the potential energy savings chart, the top energy saving measures are the same for all the resolutions. This means that this model is not particularly sensitive to resolution. It would be reasonable to use a higher resolution value for faster runs for the rest of the design and analysis process. If we had seen more variation across the different resolutions, it would be reasonable to assume that the model is sensitive to resolution and a lower resolution should be used for future analyses. This process is repeatable and applicable for most models. We encourage you to try it so you can confidently proceed with your design process and know your EAM is valid for future simulations. For more information, be sure to check out BPA Help and Revit Help.